Coach, your thoughts on today's game? Well, obviously, um, a very difficult first half. Um, I haven't been involved in many halves like that, and I'm sure our guys haven't either. So um, that was the tough part. I thought we settled down much more in the second half. Um, had a little bit of a tendency to do that in the Gonzaga game as well. Um, but when you're playing a team like this, um, you just can't get yourself in a hole like we got ourselves in a hole in the, in the first 20 minutes. And um, that, that's a tough one. You know, there, there are no excuses. We, um, we just didn't get the job done on either side of the ball in that first 20 minutes. And um, that made it really, really difficult for us. First question for the players, second row. Bryce, uh, Coach Alford mentioned uh, the start in the Gonzaga game, same type of start in the North Carolina game, and then tonight. What, what explains that tendency uh, to, to start games like that? Uh, I can't really tell you. Honestly, we just got to gotta focus more and be ready to play right out the gate. Um, we can't come out scared. We can't come out uh, tentative or passive. We got to come out um, and know the capabilities that we have as a team and, and trust each other and trust our abilities and, and just be aggressive right, right out the gate. For both, for both players, could you maybe talk about how much credit does Kentucky maybe deserve for the way the game started, 24-0? Yeah, I mean, obviously they're one of the best teams in the country, if not the best team in the country right now. So you got to give credit to them. They made it extremely hard on us, and uh, they took out, took our confidence uh, out of us right at the beginning of the game, and, and they put it to us um, from then on. So uh, definitely a lot of credit to them. Go ahead, front row. Front row. S Steve, when they jump out to that 16-0 start and you call a timeout, what do you say to the guys in the huddle? Is that just some kind of a matter of managing their spirit? Yeah, you know, it, it's not because they're not they don't care and they're not trying. You know, the guys are trying hard and we're giving they're giving great effort. It's just when nothing goes right, it gets very frustrating. It just kind of steamrolls. And you know, I think that's what happened at the start of the game. The ball didn't move. Uh, we took shots off zero, one, two passes, and and you're playing a defensive team like this. I mean, this team's long. I've been in it 24 years. Um, and I, I thought Bo Ryan's team, <laughs> my fourth year at Manchester, when we were both 31-0, and 0, I thought that was an awfully good team uh, that we played in the championship game from a Division Three standpoint. I, I don't know in my 20 years of coaching at the Division One level that I've coached against a better team than what this team looks like. They, they have everything. Uh, they've, uh, they can shoot the basketball uh, much better against us tonight than they have in a long time. But... They're long, they're athletic, they present so many problems for you because they're so deep. And you know, and Zach, your quite first question to Bryce, how's it happen when you when you list Carolina and Gonzaga and Kentucky? When we played them, I think Carolina was six, Kentucky's one, Gonzaga's nine. Um, this is a team that is full of inexperience. I mean, it's not an excuse. It's what we had three guys go hardship. Um, this team we just played had three guys that could have entered the draft and came back. Um, there's a reason why they're where they're at, and our guys are fighting. You know, as long as they keep fighting and we learn, we're not. We're probably not ready now. I'm not giving any excuses for 41-7. That should not take place. That's bad, uh, and our guys know that, and they feel bad about it. Um, the next 20, we settle down. Uh, we had similar games against Carolina and Gonzaga, but. They're not ready for that. You know, it's it, it is what it is. It, we have we just don't have that experience. We got one returning starter, Norman Powell. He, he's the only guy in the starting lineup for us last year. So, in my mind, that those are the reasons for those three games. Now, will a month from now we'll be able to play a team that's nationally ranked and and do the thing? I hope so. You know, I, I think that's what we have to be able to do. But. Um, I, I, the expectation obviously is big, you know, regardless. But we do have to be a little bit, and, and I've told I've told the media at the beginning of the year, I got to be patient. I, I said it. They're going to be games where you go, whoa, <laughs> that how these guys do that, and then they're going to be games just like today where you go, whoa, how'd that happen? <laughs> and that's. Uh, but I'm not. I'm not going to quit on these guys. I'm not. Am I frustrated and down? Sure, but. We'll get back after the break. We'll get back and we'll keep fighting, and this group will keep getting better. Um, but they're a little bit inexperienced right now to play a team. It, uh, at least, and I told these guys, in my 24 years of coaching, this is the best team I've coached against. I mean, this team is really, really good. Uh, doesn't excuse a 41 to 7 half, but um, we'll get better and we'll learn from it. Additional player questions starting here, front row. Bryce, when you guys go into the locker room with seven points, what do you say to each other and how do you come up with a plan coming in the second half? Uh, that's the hard part, you know, none of us have ever been in that situation. None of us have ever 
had a seven point half before, been down that much a half, or really at any point. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's tough. And as, as leaders with with Norman, myself, and even Kavan, uh, we got to try to just keep our spirits up and, and just have everybody believe not only in themselves but each other, and uh, just try to keep keep the spirits up and, and get us ready to go out and have a better second half. Second row with the mic. Kavan, uh, I don't think you've seen a team. You definitely haven't seen a team this this tall. You probably won't see a team this tall again. Uh, what's it like to play against a team that has three guys that are 6'11 or taller? Uh, it's pretty difficult. Uh, hard, hard to uh, get scoring angles on your layups. You're trying to finish over the top. They're real long. Great shot blockers. But it was a lot of fun. It was a great experience playing out there. Uh, I'm, I'm hopefully see them again because that was embarrassing and you want another, another stab at it. But it was a lot of fun and, and that, was, that was really good. It makes it really difficult. Third row. Come on, what goes through your mind when it gets to 24 to nothing? Are you even conscious of the score at that point, or do you just write it off as a bad day? What, what is nah, the thinking? I mean, you're very, very conscious. Of, you got to score a basket. I mean, that, that's terrible. You never should play a game where with, with score seven points and a half. Coach drills is better than that in practice, and we're much better off as a team than that. So going through my head, we just we got to score. We got to make the game closer, and we couldn't do it. Front row question. What was it that was different about the way Kentucky plays defense than other teams you faced? Obviously, the size is a part of it, but what, what stood out to you? I would say it was mainly just the size. Uh, we couldn't get to the basket how we wanted. Uh, when we did get there, it wasn't easy to finish. Uh, when we was driving, we wasn't kicking it out. We didn't get no movement in the first half. And then, so the shot blocking really made, made a difference. We'll let the players get back to their team. Thanks, Kavan, and thank you, Bryce. Now we'll take questions for the player, or coach, I'm sorry, front row. Steve, when, when he says we'd like another, we hope to see him again, I'd like another stab at it. Do you? Not right now. <laughs> yeah, <would you? laughs> I, mean, I appreciate Kevon's enthusiasm, but not right now. Um, no, but come on, I've been around as long as a, as a player, long time as a player and as a coach, and you know, I played for the best and Coach Knight, and you know, that, when you talk about a dream team, a, a team that, other than Euless, who then Euless comes in and gives you a whole different element because the starting five that they have, they can basically switch five ways. And Coach Knight, I think that was, was always his dream, that he could get five guys, six, seven, six, eight, and just switch everything. It, it, that's hard to score on. It, that's why, if you look at their numbers, they've what, played 12 games now? Look at their numbers. They're, they're holding teams to, well, we scored 42. We, ca we came into this game, they were holding teams to 48. Um, you know, so we're not the only team that they really pounded that way from, from that standpoint. So. They're really good defensively. Uh, they can switch on you. They guard the pick and rolls well. Uh, and then when you beat them, and, and I thought we did, we, we got some angles, we beat them. Uh, but then you've got two guys, 6'10", 6'11", 7 foot, that one of them jumps. If he misses it, the other one gets it. You know, it's just you don't see that kind of size. Um, and, and I think that affects you, and that's hard to prepare for. Going into a week here and trying to prep for this, you can't simulate what you see. I, I, I joked with Cal before the game because Coach Schilling came up to me before the game. He said, hey, I know that you know when we prepare for teams and then you see them in person, the majority of the teams have overhyped sizes and the sizes aren't correct. And he came up to me and goes, that's not true with this team. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's legit. The, the, what, the, what they are size-wise is legit. And when you have that kind of size, you can do so many different things defensively. And Give Cal credit, give the staff credit. They've really got this team playing hard at the defensive end. They, they continue to play at that level defensively. Um, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. They, they can, uh, they got a chance to run this thing out. Uh, they're that good, they're that talented. Second row. Uh, you talked about the lack of experience uh, on your team. How do you use this game as a teaching tool? Well, you communicate with them, you know, just like we did at halftime, just like we did at post game. Uh, you come back. I don't know how much video you want to show them uh, of this game because it's a sensitive deal. Because um, we've got to have confidence moving forward. But it, there's teaching moments. For instance, in the first half, the ball didn't move. And we're a team where the ball's got to move. In the second half, the, the ball moved and we got better shots and we made shots. Even if we would have missed those shots in the second half, we got better shots in the second half. So we can teach that way. Uh, defensively, we got to look at how we're guarding. You know how we were set up. For instance, Booker. We didn't want to. We didn't really want to come off Booker, and we give him all kinds of open looks. So we have a lot of breakdowns. And right now, our our defense is too much predicated on what's happening offensively. 
if we're good offensively, then we do some better things defensively. And that, that's what a young, inexperienced team does. We've got to learn from that, that we've got to, we've got to get tougher and nastier and better defensively, which I think then will help our offense. And these three ranked opponents, they bring those things out in you. That's why they're ranked. That's why they're really good. They're going to exploit that and bring it out. And those things have been expo exposed. Hadn't been so exposed in the other games. We've been able to do pretty well in those. But when you play teams like that, that it, that's going to get exposed to you. Front row, left side. Coach, uh, when, when you watch the tape on them, do, do they look different when the, the jersey is Kansas or UCLA or, or even when they play you know, Texas? <coughs> um, you know, that, that's hard. You know, obviously, they probably played really well against Kansas and they probably played really well against us. You know, Cal told me it was the best they've played all year. They might have just been being nice. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that, those are two games that I would say they played at a really high level. But you're 12-0. and What's the win margin? It was one at 28 coming in tonight. We, we didn't. That didn't go down. So it's it's you know you got a you got a win margin of 30 plus, and you've played 12 games, and you've played the likes of Kansas and UCLA and Prov, Prov, they played Providence, they played Texas. I mean, they played a pretty good schedule, and they're 12 and 0 with a plus 30 win margin, and they're holding teams about 45 points. So even if you say, okay, Columbia played them, you know, a little bit tougher, or you know, Boston played them. You, you got a target on your back the size of the state of Kentucky, the way it is. And uh, for them to perform at the level, you, you're coming into break. Those are always tough games to begin with. I, I thought they were tremendous. And, you know, Cal's got them playing at a very high level, believing in what they want to do. And um, like I said, I, I don't know of too many teams, if any, in, in my career that uh, I've coached against that's been any better. Question, third row. Barring an additional injury for them, what is it going to take? What kind of team is it going to take to beat them? Um, you know, I, 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 they're a hard team to man, you know, and we, and we tried zoning and that didn't work. Uh, so we went man and uh, they're a very difficult team to man because they've got very good inside out. And if the Harrisons, you know, if they'll shoot and play that way and that, I thought they were really under control and did a lot of good things tonight as far as shot selection. And if they make shots like that, um, they even become harder to play against because they're just so hard to guard. You know, I would think if a team can come in with a lot of length um, and throw a, a zone out there that's got length and makes and really gets them out of the paint to where they have to shoot jump shot after jump shot, okay, and, and that might sound like a good game plan, but they rebound for every two shots they take, they rebound one of them. <laughs> so it's just a hard team to play against. I, I think their key is defensively. I, I really think this is a team that if, if you guard them well and they score 50 points and shoot 20% from the field, they still beat you because they hold you to 35. I, I just think that's their makeup. Uh, this team's focused. It's driven. Uh, there's not a weakness on the team. Um, it's, it is. It's, it wasn't a fun team for me to watch today, but I, I enjoy watching the rest of the season because it's, it's good basketball that's really well coached with really good players. Final question in the back row. Steve, you know what it's like to make it to a title game undefeated. Sorry. Um, that's good. Um, what what does it take? What will it take for this Kentucky team mentally to be able to, as you referred to it? Yeah, I, you know, I did it at the Division Three level. Um, Bo and I both had undefeated teams going into that season, and, and that was fun. But I can remember, you know, we you're, you're going to be down six or seven with a minute to go, and try to figure a way to pull that out, and. You know, who knows what's going to happen in league play. Um, but they're such a dominant team, Reed. I, I think it really is a mindset. You know, it's it, if they have no injuries, further injuries, it, it's really a mindset within the players. Um, they know what they have to do. It's just staying driven where you got to play. Pretty much all of us are going to be playing two games a week now. So you're away from the three games in three days, or we went through seven games in 14 days. You're away from that now. Now it's two games a week. So really – taking care of their bodies off the court, uh, not listening to all the, it's going to be hard, you know, because they're going to get praised a lot and they, they deserve that praise. But if what they truly want and what they're truly trying to get to, you got to kind of block all that out and come to work every day to listen to your coaching staff and know that there's still room to get better. And that's the scary part about them. Uh, I think they can probably still get better uh, as they continue to get more and more experience as they go along this thing. And as it grows, I think a lot of times you think that there becomes more pressure. I think as it grows, they're going to get hungrier with it. Uh, just looking at their demeanor, um, this thing reaches 18, 19, 20 in a row. 
you may not get them because I think they'll get really hungry and, and think that they can do it now. Thank you for your time, Coach. I appreciate Coach. it. Thank you.